Hi everyone, welcome to another Honey Stocks stock market outlook for the month of March. Now before I do the usual and switch over to my screen share and walk you through quite a lot of the, the key charts and of course many of the individual names that I know that many of you tune in for, um, there's a couple of things that I want to just kind of get out there straight off the bat. Um, it's of course been very, very challenging, I think, for most, especially if you are heavy into tech, growth tech, etc. There's been a, a very clear shift in market dynamics and, of course, many of the boring names that I've been calling for for the last few uh, weeks and months are continuing to get stronger, whereas the tech and the growth tech names continue to, to just kind of plummet. So I want to walk through quite a few of the charts that I've been sharing with our clients and members over the last six weeks, two months, and I hope you get, of course, a lot of value from this. A uh, couple of things to say, just I'm not a day trader. I think those of you that follow me on social media, Twitter, will know that uh, I'm not a day trader. I couldn't think of anything worse. My time horizon is generally weeks to months. and. The, the second point I want to make as well is if there is any uh, impromptu barking in the background at any point during this video, um, I have a, a small puppy, he's being trained at the moment, so um, apologies in advance if, there, if there's any barking, but let's dive into the charts, let's see if we can make some sense and I hope you get some ideas for the forthcoming few weeks. Now, before I get into the charts, please do pause the video. Make sure you're comfortable with that before uh, watching any further. It basically just says that there's not any investment advice and please do your own due diligence and don't be silly with any of your decisions. To give myself just a little bit of credibility, I'm working my way towards my CMT. My technical uh, analysis is known in professional circles, featured in a lot of prominent uh, online magazines few of my recent calls back in November, small caps, got many of our clients and members defensive ahead of these declines. For those that follow my blog, the 3rd of January, the great valuation reset, very, very popular at the time. And the 5th of January, again, highlighting the big field breakout in the, the S&P 500. Um, back in September, I made a bearish call and Again, for those of you who have followed me over the years, you'll know that I got uh, many of our clients and members defensive ahead of the crash. The, this analysis is front and center on my website. I think there's a lot of learning to be had for those of you that are maybe in the process of learning technical analysis. Um, you'll see how professionals look at the market and the decisions and, and the chart charting techniques that we use. Um, and if you get some value from this, feel free to follow me on Twitter. But please, 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 the only thing that I ask before you watch any further, please give the video a like, a thumbs up, and let me know what stock is on your radar uh, next week. Um, it all helps with the, the YouTube algorithms and helps to get my work out there. Now, let's dive into the charts now. I think one thing to say is that I'm not overthinking the broader market at the moment. Now, the reason that I'm not overthinking the S&P 500, the Dow, the triple Qs, etc., is because of the weightings that mega cap tech have within these uh, indices. I'm very much focused on the individual charts for the individual names. I think most of you probably understand that you know, we're looking at names in the commodity space. Those are the names that have been moving, whereas the, the likes of Apple, Amazon, etc., have struggled somewhat. So that weighs on the major averages. That said, um, these are some of the charts that I've been sharing with our clients who like to, to kind of assess the, the broader market more than I, than I do. We've got key support levels uh, in the S&P 500. Now, when I'm looking for potential tradable bottoms, one of the things I look for is a bullish divergence. So there is a bullish divergence with the S&P 500 at the moment. Of course, there's a massive amount of headline risk at the moment. I'm not um, in any way uh, you know, diminishing the, the risk that, that's attached to, to, to the headlines at the moment with the whole Russia-Ukraine situation. 
But if I'm looking at it purely on a charting perspective, there is a bullish divergence with the S&P 500. That carries on into the Dow as well. Because of the, the correlation that we have with the S&P 500, with the Dow, we can see that the, the Dow chart pretty much mirrors the S&P chart. Again, triple Qs have been uh, beaten to death uh, over the, the last few months. There are no trends within, uh, within technology at the moment, in my opinion. And what we're seeing here again, we're seeing another bullish divergence. We've got small caps, which are in a, a tight range at the moment. But again, we have a bullish divergence. Now, bullish divergence in of itself is not the, the be all and end all for making decisions in the market. It comes down to, to many, many factors. But if we start to break out above key levels, you know, let's use the, the Russell 2000 as an example. If we start to break back up above these key levels and we're looking at failed breakdowns and, and you know, potential double bottom pattern, that would be highly bullish in my opinion for the market because the Russell 2000 is a really good gauge of, of market uh, risk sentiment. And if the small caps are moving higher, then that would be a risk on environment in my opinion. So I'm watching the small caps chart probably more than any other at the moment. And I think if that breaks out higher, then of course that's, that's going to be good news for the broader market. We've got the US dollar index breaking out. This is a chart that I shared this week with uh, social media as well. So for those of you that are maybe looking for exposure to the dollar index, I, I think the dollar index, uh, provided we're above the June 20 highs, I think that makes a lot of sense. Now, I have around 20, maybe 25 individual charts that I think warrant some consideration. There's a mixed bag here. There's stocks that are showing massive amounts of relative strength. There are stocks that have been beaten down a little bit. There are some tech names that I've been asked about over the last few months. So I've kind of just put everything together. And of course, I have my own unique brand of technical analysis. So it should be very, very easy for you to understand, especially if you are new to my work. So we'll kick it off with copper and the copper miners now. For those of you that are fixated on tech and growth tech and dollar cost averaging, etc., and you know you don't really look at copper names, let me assure you the copper names, the steel names, the, the move like growth tech names, uh, some of these names have been ripping 20% this week. So we've got a, a base breakout in the copper ETF. So you would expect the copper miners to, to go along for a ride with that. Now, if the copper names and the copper miner names are going to break out, that should be good news for Freeport McMoran. Now, what I will say is if there's any disclosures that I need to make regarding my own positions, any positions that I've been recommending to clients, members over the last few weeks, and I will do so. Um, this is one of those disclosures. Uh, I own plenty of Freeport McMoran, and this is an alert that went out to our clients and members when it broke out above uh, 4650 level. Um, so I'm very, very bullish on Freeport McMoran. As long as we're above 4650, I, I think it's a, a buy all day long. It's one of those names that is doing very, very well, showing incredible relative strength. And despite what many of you think regarding the broader market, there are hundreds of uptrends out there. It's just a case of finding them. Um, this is another one. Uh, I put this out to our, our clients and members this week. This is in the coal industry, believe it or not. Um, obviously, solid fundamentals, and it's put in a monster breakout. Now, what the chart is essentially saying, it's reasonable to expect a pullback given the run that it's had. Uh, but I think if we get a pullback, I think it's probably a pullback that's worth considering. Uh, to buy. Uh, we know the, the natural movement of price is for it to break out, retest. We call that polarity. And if we get that polarity, then you would expect uh, Sun Coke Energy to, to move higher. Uh, another one of those names, this was in um, our uh, midweek work and break out above 1950. Again, it's in the coal sector. Uh, it's ripped 25% this week. 
and very, very similar to some coke energy. So I think any pullback or any weakness is probably uh, an opportunity to buy. Remain bullish above 1950. Uh, Navios uh, Maritime Partners, again, solid fundamentals. Um, and let me just highlight something here with the market cap. It's not a $950 billion market cap. It's $950 million dollar market cap this is just a little anomaly with with my chart i need to to get this fixed but um what i'm looking at here is a potential a double bottom breakout and you know i'm, I'm not going to discriminate against stocks that are moving higher uh, boston scientific again 60 billion dollar market cap company looking like it wants to break out from a base dating back to 2004 I like it above 47 bucks. We've had a big breakout in Altria Group. Now, this is a chart that's been recommended to our clients and members this weekend. Um, so again, uh, I like it above $53. Apple, I get so many questions on this one. Um, for me, the Apple name is, is, of course, not going anywhere. I think most of us probably own it in, in some way, shape or form and it looks like it's put in a, a failed breakdown. So this is one of those names that I'm actually quite happy to, to dollar cost average on. It doesn't matter to me really anymore, you know, if it, if it declines. I, I, this is one of my long-term holdings and I'm okay with it. So uh, again, I've got an upper target there around 180. Good old Netflix. Now, for those of you that follow Bill Ackman on Twitter, you'll know that he uh, made a, a massive call on uh, Netflix, I think five, six weeks ago. Now, I also made pretty much the same call, just showing that it was reasonable to expect a, a bounce given that the massively oversold reading that we had with RSI, I think it was down at eight or nine. And of course, we, we got a monster rip. Um, on the back of that and it would be very very interesting to me to see whether or not Bill Ackman still holds his Netflix shares or, or whether he did his usual and pumped it on social media before selling off but I have what looks to be a very solid looking trend line in Netflix now the, the problem I have here is if Netflix does start to decline below these uh, significant levels then it could equal a little bit more pain ahead I think fundamentally it's obviously Netflix, it's a solid company, but it does look like it's it's showing a lot of weakness at the moment. You, you can, in my opinion, still remain bullish on the stock above these levels, but if it starts to break down, for me that's a problem. Bullish divergence in uh, Microsoft pretty much mirrors the, the triple Q chart. So again, I think Microsoft is one of those names that, that I'm quite happy to dollar cost on. Um, solid uh, multi-line insurance company um, looking at the earnings growth decent PE and um, I like it above 175 this is one of the names that, that I've been uh, walking through with our, our clients and members over the last couple of months um, I've applied a, a trailing stop loss to it and you know see how far it wants to go NVIDIA again 50 week uh, simple moving average looks to be a, a key level for the stock the hope is of course i think most of us that hold nvidia especially in our long-term accounts probably want to see these levels uh, continue to hold the problem for me really arises if we get a confirmed weekly close below these key levels uh, but ultimately i think you can just remain bullish above the 50 week uh, moving average uh, ABV is approaching our upper target level here around 164. Uh, this is one of our premium charts from back in January. So I, I would fully expect it to, to, to get hopefully to 164. Please note, however, uh, the RSI on the weekly chart is, is looking a bit lofty there. It's had a, a monster run over the last few weeks. It's held up incredibly well. And... Um, yeah, I, I think uh, 164 is, is a logical target to aim for. Again, Antero Resources, disclosure, I own plenty of Antero Resources. Uh, I've been recommending it to clients and members over the last few weeks as well. Um, I've actually been covering it for our clients and members since this breakout uh, 18 months ago, and it just seems to put in base breakout after base breakout. 
it's of course aligned with natural gas so there is that element as well and again solid fundamentals uh, zoom is now back to its pandemic breakout levels it's given up all of its gains since the the start of covid so what i'm looking at here if you're looking for a risk to reward proposition we have a bullish divergence in place and a key support level um, if this level was to, to kind of break, then of course that's, that's a bigger problem. I know Kathy Wood over at Z uh, ARC likes Zoom a lot. For me, I, I don't get married to anything. I'm just looking for risk to reward propositions. Um, so if Zoom is going to rebound, this would be a level that it would probably need to happen. And um, that's where I am with Zoom at the moment. CF Industries, again, this is a massive, massive mover. I'm expecting this to start to move towards 100 bucks now. Uh, again, I've been covering this one for clients and members over the last few months, and it's doing very, very well. Um, of course, in inverse head and shoulders breakouts tend to be pretty decent. Uh, we have, of course, PayPal. I get asked about PayPal all the time. Um, I made bearish calls on PayPal over the last few months and it looks to be breaking down uh, below more key support levels. I don't know when the pain will end with PayPal. It's one of those areas that, that's being disrupted, I think, by the Bitcoin Lightning Network. I, I've touched on this one for months now. And um, yeah, it's, it's not doing very, very well and it looks to be breaking more key support levels. We've got of course, Meta, Facebook, whatever you want to call it. Now, let me just get it out there off the bat that I am uh, an investor, a holder, bag holder in, in Meta at the moment. Uh, I was caught out by the, the earnings gap down. I think it was 25, 30%. I forget now. But what I'm looking at here is a, a potential um, failed breakdown. Now, of course, it needs to get above $224 for, for this, this chart to, to hold some merit below these levels. And it, it, it's, of course, a bearish chart. But uh, I am noting that, of course, we're looking for an oversold bounce similar to what we've seen in the past. Um, but I only like it if it's above $224. AMD, uh, one of my clients uh, asked me about this during the week, I think this trend line could have some merit here so um, certainly if there's a breakout there in AMD I, I think the momentum move could potentially be with that trend line. Uh, Micron technology this is one of those um, charts that I put out to our clients and members as a trade alert believe it or not um, but we are looking for a breakout above $100 uh, I think below this level, it's going to continue to chop about. But if it can get a breakout above $100, then for me, it makes a lot of sense. Halliburton, again, we're looking at energy names here. It broke out above its 200-week uh, simple moving average, and it's been on an absolute rocket ship ever since with most of the energy names. Um, I think the hope is that, you know, with the energy that they continue to move higher. I, I think, of course, the, the headline risk is there with the, the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. So ultimately, we'll see how far it wants to go. Now, last month, I put out a chart for the, I guess, the, the steel index, showing that, that if the steel index was to break lower, then that would be a problem. Now, what's ultimately happened here is with the steel index, because of the high weighting of United States Steel Corp putting in a failed breakdown, this is a, a chart that I shared uh, on the 1st of February with our clients, just showing that if we put in a failed breakdown uh, with uh, United States Steel, then that would be bullish for the steel, steel sector. Now, of course, I don't think anybody expected a 47% move in the, the space of uh, a few weeks, but that's ultimately what we've got. Now, it does look like it's breaking out again. Now, the problem I have with breakouts when RSI is so high is quite often the breakouts fail. I think you have to understand and realize that when a stock makes a 45, 50% move and then breaks out, 
the bulk of the, the move tends to have been made. So I think those that, that buy really high on the back of you know these types of moves probably wonder why breakouts fail. This is one of the reasons why breakouts ultimately fail is because they've already moved 50%. And um, so I'm actually looking at this. I'd like to see a period of consolidation. But if you are holding United States Steel, I don't think there's anything wrong with just maybe putting a stop loss below this key level. And um, yeah, hopefully it just it holds above that 30 buck level because I think that's going to be key for the stock. Um, we've got JP Morgan. I put this chart out to Twitter uh, during the week, just highlighting the breakdown there. Now, very, very similar, I think, to United States Steel. Rather than go out and outright, you know, take a bearish position in JP Morgan, I like to look for these failed breakdowns because I think they hold a lot of merit and ultimately we can get these uh, big moves higher. Uh, so I think that's something I'm looking for there with JP Morgan. SoFi put out some uh, good earnings, but this 50-day uh, simple moving average is a problem for the stock. I think the chart can, can demonstrate that. But there is a bullish divergence in place. So again, we'll, we'll see what happens there with, with SoFi. But um, it's currently at the moment a bearish chart. It's below its uh, IPO uh, lows. Um, so I think there's a lot of caution that's needed with SoFi despite um, a lot of the positivity that it has. Uh, DuPont Again, it's in a sideways trading range. We're looking for a breakout. Uh, Vale is now, or Wally, Valley, I forget how you pronounce it. Um, again, put this chart out on the 15th of January. It's doing incredibly well. We've got an upper target here of around 23 bucks and um, ultimately see how far it wants to go. Uh, Pampa Energia, again, we're in the, these sectors that, again, many of you just won't be looking at but it's broken out above its uh, 200 week simple moving average i put this out to our members a couple of weeks ago and um it's done incredibly well so i, th I think you know air freight courier names they make a lot of sense to me at the moment uh, raytheon is at a very very key level i think um it has broken out but i think Something I want to just maybe say with the, with names that are you know aligned with aerospace, defence, etc. Is you know what what does it look like when we start to see words like ceasefire? Um, and certainly for me, I actually put this out to our clients last week as a potential buy uh, before backtracking on it uh, during the week. And I think if it puts in a failed breakout here, then that, that could potentially be a problem. But if it puts in a retest, you know, a very successful retest here and starts to move higher next week, then I think Raytheon will be a buy. But again, don't be surprised if it's a sell, if it starts to break down. It's one of those charts where, you know, the, the technical analysis on it can change on 30 seconds notice. Um, that's just the nature of you know market analysis. Your your thesis, as soon as price tells you, will will switch in a second, and and that's ultimately where I am with Raytheon, uh, ADM, uh, again agricultural uh, commodities name doing incredibly incredibly well, and we've got XME. Now I think what I want to say with this one because I posted this chart to Twitter as well. Um, couple of weeks ago we're looking at a massively uh, overbought market here so it's reasonable to expect a pullback with the, the metals and mining names and um, ultimately we'll, we'll see what happens next week but I think those that have invested in uh, the, the ETF and, and certainly the names that are aligned with it have done very very well over the last few weeks congratulations so I hope you have had quite a lot of value from the analysis that I've just walked through. Um, if you're somebody that, I guess, struggles a little bit and you know, maybe been under a lot of stress over the last few weeks, feel free to, to stick around for a minute or two. Uh, but if you got some value from that, please, like I said before, please just give the video a like and let me know what stock is on your radar. Um, like I said, it all helps with the, the YouTube 
uh, algorithms. But if you are new to, to my work, feel free to jump on to my website at honeystocks.com. Uh, I provide uh, technical analysis uh, research and we obviously have uh, a membership. Now, what our membership provides is our premium weekend analysis. Every single weekend, we put out a, a five, 10 minute analysis with all the, 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 the key charts and of course the names that I like for the forthcoming week. Provide uh, trade ideas. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Provide our midweek halftime analysis every single Wednesday, again with a market update and a few names that I think, again, warrant some consideration. Uh, provide access to uh, an incredible trading community. Uh, I provide charting support Monday to Friday during market hours. So if you need to request a chart from me, um, I generally will get a chart back to you within an hour or two and also provide access to a technical analysis program, which I'll show you what that looks like uh, in just a second. Uh, but this is what my platform looks like. I use Workplace. So if you uh, want to work through a technical analysis program, it's all there for you. But I have a very new feature to my work. It's called the chart book. Um, so if you want access to my sector and market uh, charts at any time, um, you can just log in to Workplace and you can load up my uh, personal chart book for all the individual sectors. And of course, you can go back and have a look at the recent weekend and, and midweek halftime analysis. I've got around 250 members on my platform and it's just an incredible place um, to communicate, share ideas, and of course, uh, charts. But just to show you what my uh, trade alerts look like, this is a, an alert that went out last year for Lithium Americas, which did very, very well. Cloudflare was 100 and odd percent massive winner. Square Inc at the time uh, did very, very well. Zscaler, incredible move. Antero Resources, which I touched on on this analysis, I think, um, like I said, I've been covering this one for, for the last 18 months and it's been massive. Plug Power um, was massive at the time, 300, 400% moves, but I'm very, very unique in what I do. Every single high conviction alert that I have ever sent out to our clients and members is logged for complete transparency on my website, um, 2021, 2020, 2019. So if you are considering signing up for my service, please go and have a look and make sure the, the stocks that I like to recommend are the types of names that you like to buy. I'm not into penny stocks. I'm, I'm looking at high quality names with decent fundamentals. And of course, you know, if, if growth is there and growth is, is making a comeback, then of course I'll pivot back into growth tech. But I guess at the moment that's not the place to be. So a lot of my uh, work has been focused on a lot of the boring industrial names, the coal names, the energy names that have been ripping recently. And um, I think my work is probably a good fit. If, if you've got a mid-term approach, you know, maybe you're looking weeks to months out, maybe you're looking to get away from day trading, maybe you want to learn technical analysis, Maybe you just don't have the time to, to look at the market in the, the same way that us professionals do and you know scan the market and, and look at as many charts. You probably find some value from my work, especially if you're sick of hunting around social media every weekend for um, the, the latest ideas. So feel free to go and check that out. But you know, testimonials are um, part and parcel, I think. Some massive, massive moves. This is one of our options traders. He's turned 55k and he's 650 since March 2020. Sean, again, he's had a lot of value from my service. Look forward to many more years as a member. Uh, Nick, I will be a member for life. Rocco, guidance made the year. Vince, again, up over 100% two years running. Lot, there's lots there's lots there. I mean, I, I could go on forever about it. 
most of my clients and members have been with me for the last three, four years. And like I said, it's, it's a really cool community. So if you've stuck around to the end, thank you very much for watching. Please go check out the website, but don't forget to hit the, the like button. Appreciate it very much. Thanks as always.